Hi, I'm Ellen from The Chili Dog, and today I'm going to teach you how to knit a spiral toe like the one I used here in my Riptide socks. I like spiral toes because they're both decorative with these pretty swirls around the toe, and they're also functional. Since the decreases for the toe shaping are spaced evenly around and not stacked up the same column of stitches, you're less likely to experience any weird tension issues. And you can also create a more rounded shape than a standard wedge toe. Since we're working our spiral toe from the top of the sock down, I'll start with some simple math so you can figure out exactly when you need to start your toe shaping, and then I'll demonstrate the knitting part. Let's get started. When you're knitting a spiral toe, Four evenly spaced decreases are made on your sock every other round. Traditionally, you keep decreasing in this manner until just eight stitches remain at the tip of the toe. Then you pull your yarn tail through the final eight stitches to finish things off. This produces a somewhat pointy sock toe that may have just a little bit of extra fabric here at the tip of the toe. I prefer to make my spiral sock toes a little more rounded here at the tip. So I start my shaping the same by making four evenly spaced decreases every other round. But instead of continuing until eight stitches remain, I stop when I'm left with about half the original number of sock stitches. Then I make my decreases every round until just eight stitches remain and then finish things off. So let's figure out how long our sock toes will be so we know when to begin the toe shaping. For the calculations, you're going to need to know your round gauge and also how many stitches around your sock circumference is. First, let's do the math to figure out the length of our more pointed spiral toe. Again, you're going to need to know your sock circumference and stitches. Mine happens to be 64 stitches around. And your round gauge, and I'm getting 44 rounds per four inches. The first thing we need to figure out is how many stitches are being decreased. That's just the sock circumference minus eight stitches because we're left with eight stitches at the end of the shaping. So 64 stitches minus 8 is 56 stitches. That's how many stitches need to be decreased in the shaping of my spiral toe. Next, let's figure out how many decrease rounds there's, there are going to be. And again, this is just easy math. It's the number of stitches decreased, this is 56, divided by 4 stitches per round because every decrease round will be decreasing 4 stitches in that round. 56 divided by 4 stitches per round is 14 rounds. So we're going to be making 14 decrease rounds. Next, let's figure out the total number of toe rounds. Decreases are made every other round. So there's going to be a decrease round and then a round that's worked even. So the total number of toe rounds is going to be the number of decrease rounds times 2. So in my case, it's just going to be 14 rounds times two for a total of 28 rounds. And finally, we can figure out how long the toe of our sock is going to be. And that's just going to be the number of toe rounds divided by our round gauge. Again, it's just 28 rounds divided by my gauge, which is 44 rounds per four inches. And when I work that all out, I figured out that my sock toe is going to be about two and a half inches long. So I would know to start shaping my toe when my sock is about two and a half inches shorter than I want it to be. Now let's figure out how long the toe shaping would be for this more rounded spiral toe. Again, there's two pieces of information that we need to know. Our sock circumference at the beginning, mine happens to be 64 stitches around, and our round gauge. And again, mine happens to be 44 rounds per 4 inches. As we're making these calculations, 
remember the toe shaping in this case happens in two parts. So first, we're going to decrease every other round until about half of our original number of stitches remain. And then in the second part of this shaping, we're actually going to decrease every round. Let's look at the decreases for the first part of the shaping. The first thing we need to figure out is how many stitches we're decreasing. So it's how many stitches you start out with minus how many you're left with, which is about half of the sock circumference. This number has to be divisible by four. In my case, half the sock circumference is, is divisible by four because half of 64 is 32. But if your sock were say 60 stitches around and you divide that by two, you would end up getting 30. 30 is not divisible by four, so you need to make a choice on whether you want to decrease down to 28 stitches or 32 stitches. Either way will work. The math is just going to be slightly different. So for my sock, my sock starts with 64 stitches. I'm going to decrease down until there's 32 stitches left. That's half of the sock circumference. So I know that I'm decreasing a total of 32 stitches. Next, I'll figure out how many decrease rounds there's going to be in this first part of the shaping. That just equals the number of stitches decreased divided by four stitches decreased per round. And for me, that's 32 stitches divided by four stitches per round. So I'm going to have a total of eight decrease rounds. But on this first part of the shaping, I'm making my decrease rounds every other round. So I'll do a decrease round and then I'll work around even. So the total number of toe rounds for this first part is the number of decrease rounds times two. That's just eight times two for a total of 16 rounds in the first part of the toe shaping. In the second part of the toe shaping, we're going to go through the same process to figure out how many rounds there are in the second part of the toe. The number of stitches decreased is how many stitches are left at the end of part one minus eight, because that's how many there will be stitches there will be left at the end. Half my sock stitches is 32 minus eight equals 24 stitches. Next, we'll figure out how many decrease rounds there are going to be in the second part. Again, this is just the number of stitches decreased divided by four stitches per round. This time, I'm decreasing 24 stitches divided by four stitches per round. So there's going to be a total of six decrease rounds. And since I am just decreasing every round instead of every other round, I don't have to do any extra multiplication there. The decrease rounds are made every single round. So I know there's six decrease rounds and there's actually going to be six actual rounds in that section of the toe. We're almost done now, don't worry. The total number of toe rounds is just the number of toe rounds from part run plus the number of toe rounds from part two. 16 plus six is 22. And finally, our toe length. It's just the number of toe rounds divided by the round gauge. So that's just going to be 22 rounds divided by 44 rounds per four inches. And I know that my more rounded spiral toe is going to be two inches long. So I would start knitting my toe when my sock was two inches shorter than what I actually want it to be. To get started, you're going to need four stitch markers and the markers should be placed evenly around your sock on your needles with the same number of stitches in between each of the markers. So in my case, my sock is 64 stitches around, so there's 16 stitches in between each of the markers. Rounds will begin and end at the first marker. And it's important to remember that the markers are all going to shift one stitch to the left 
every time we work a decrease round. So let's get started with our first decrease round. I happen to place my first marker one stitch away from the side of the sock so that things were a little bit easier to see because I can't place a marker at that needle change. So I'm going to work to the beginning of the round where my marker is and then I'm going to remove the marker. Then I'm going to work a left slanting decrease. In this case, I'm using an SSK, so I'll slip one stitch knitwise, slip the second stitch knitwise, and then knit those two stitches together through the back loop. And after that decrease is complete, I'm going to replace my marker that shows us the beginning of the round. And you can see here how it's already shifted one stitch to the left. Before I had one stitch from the side of the sock to the marker, now there's two stitches between the side of the sock and the marker. Now I'll just go ahead and knit across until I get to that next marker on my needles. As I work the remainder of my decrease round, I'm going to do the same thing at the remaining three markers. I'll remove the marker, work an SSK, my left leaning decrease, so slip, slip, and then knit the stitches together through the back loops, and then replace the marker onto my needles and then knit across to the next marker. When I get back to my first marker, I know I finished my decrease round, and then it's time to work one round even with no decreases. So I'll just work all the way around, slipping my markers as needed until I get to the beginning of the round. The next time I get back to my beginning of round marker, I'm ready to do another decrease round. So all the decrease rounds are the same. You remove the marker, do your left slanting decrease, my slip slip knit. And then replace the marker. and then knit across to the next marker four times. So if you're working a standard, more pointed spiral toe, you just continue to work one decrease round, followed by one round worked even until eight stitches remain. If you're working a more rounded spiral toe, like the one I'm going to do, you would continue to work one decrease round, followed by one round worked even, until about half of your original number of sock stitches remain, and then you would only work the decrease rounds until the eight stitches remain. When eight stitches remain, it's time to finish things off. You can cut or break your yarn, leaving about a 12 to 18 inch tail, and then thread that tail onto a yarn needle, and you're going to go ahead and pull the yarn through the remaining stitches. And I actually like to go through them twice. So I'm going to go around the first four stitches and pull my tail through. Turn my work over. Go through the next four stitches. And pull the yarn through. And then I'll go through one more time of each of the sets. And this time I'm going to drop them off the needles as I go. So I'll go through the first four stitches. And drop them off my needle. Turn it over. And then go through the second four stitches. And drop them off the needle. You're left with a little bit of a hole here right at the tip of the toe. Put your hand into your sock 
and then you can have your needle go right through that hole at the tip of the toe and as you pull the yarn in to the inside you can just tighten things up and it closes that hole that's at the tip of the toe and then to finish you would just weave in your yarn tail on the inside of the sock. I hope you enjoyed learning how to knit a spiral sock toe. I think it's a pretty and easy alternative to the standard wedge. If you're ready to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my Riptide socks. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!